well, wait a minute now. Hold on. Well, we're still getting warmed up. Uh, not to out myself as a huge WWE dork, but as some people would say, the champ is here. Uh, coming fresh off of our first on-stream national championship. And we're back with our North Carolina Tar Heels, ranked number one again. So let's get it going. Let's see if we can go back to back now. Uh, now, anybody that watched the last stream knows we got hit with four transfers, uh, two starters, and a huge role player in Eloy. So the likelihood of us going back to back, I don't think is wonderful. Uh, but the possibility exists, so we'll see what happens. Now, uh, one of the one of the questions at the end of last stream was whether or not I had red shirts to pass out on these inside players. Obviously, I would never do it with Jarrett Medley, who I mean is, is an absolute one and done stud, bucket getter, nine scoring, ten inside shooting. This guy's a beast. If we do go back to back, it's gonna be because of this guy. Uh, Ivan Ross, a senior, Marshall Thomas, a junior. We don't have the option there, so falls back to Manny Barnes uh, and I do think that we can red shirt Manny Barnes so and and we can do that because you know normally I only need three guys on the inside I mean we've got three centers and two power forwards all of whom I really trust we'll see Nick Rogers here he's all right he's not friendly once some minutes so yeah we, we don't want to Redshirt him. We know Eric Tice will be starting. So I think Rogers, Ross, and Thomas, between the three of them, will be perfectly uh, enough to back up the inside. And we can let Medley and Tice start. And Manny Barnes can redshirt. So that's going to be our first move here, is to go ahead and get that taken care of, because otherwise I will most certainly forget to do it. All right, so hopefully it doesn't make him mad to where he wants to transfer, but we got that taken care of. Now, the rest of these guys, Thornton's our only small forward. We only have two scholarship guards right now, so no other red shirts going around. Uh, we definitely need <laughs> we need a lot of players out here. You know, We lost Wall, who was some of our small forward depth. Uh, we lost two of our point guards. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a lot of scholarships here. It should be an exciting recruiting season. Uh, you guys can see here, for anybody that's just now joining in, I mean, Medley, just a beast with the nine scoring, the 10 inside. He's going to be unstoppable. Uh, pretty good rebounder, not bad at defense, so all-around good player. We are a little bit lacking in defense, especially at the guard position this year. Uh, but, you know, we've got good scoring. Harris, Joyner, 7 and 8. Thornton, a 7. Tice, Rogers, both 7s. So we got good scoring to go around. Joyner's got the killer jumper. Uh, we've got all the pieces here. We can make a run. What's up, Beach Bear? Hey, you know, I, I know you're a Tar Heel guy, so we're going back to back just for you, buddy. Uh, and hopefully we're going to do that on the back of Jarrett Medley. One thing I will do this year that you guys are going to have to remind me to take off. Oh, no, actually, I already had it set favor inside. I want to get that favor inside, uh, especially because of Medley. Uh, let's see. As far as set usage, we'll be going Harris. Joiner, Thornton, Tice, Medley. So yeah, sixty percent is fine there. Uh, let's let's not worry with the death chart and all that stuff yet, because uh, you guys know a lot of times the the AI likes to shuffle all that around uh, in the middle of things. So let's see. I don't know. Did we have anybody graduate? I know we had a lot of people leave. I don't know that any of them graduated. At least any of them that were good enough to go pro. Dun, dun, dun. No, I don't see anything. Chris has got the word out. We're good to go there. All right. So I would like to see. Let's see if we can scroll through here and see where our guys went. Ooh, there's Michael Wall. Went to Georgia Tech. Ashley Dieter to Wisconsin. Uh, I don't remember the third or the fourth guy. I know Eloise was the third. Let's see, let's see if we can spot Eloise in here. I don't see him in there. There he is, Irvin Ellie. He went to Pitt. All right. So, Pitt, Georgia Tech, and what was the other? Wisconsin. I'll, I'll never remember the name of that fourth guy that transferred out. He was one of the... If I go back to back, I can have the cards logo on a piece of the banner. Hey, we're doing that anyway, man. We're doing that anyway. All right, let's delete all these old emails. Let's kick it off with some recruiting. 
see what we got eight scholarships so we find ourselves rebuilding again and i mean you just know going into this like tice and uh oh shoot tyson joiner brown joiner eric tice both of them are going to be graduating shay thornton is going to be graduating so we're losing three more guys plus medley is a virtual lock to be one and done oh we're also losing ivan ross so four five so we're losing five guys off of this team even without transfers next year we're really just coming back with kevin harris nick rogers manny barnes marshall thomas we need a lot of guards small forwards uh, we could survive next year without bringing in anything on the inside but we definitely want to bring some stuff on the inside What's up? We got Chuck Exotic back in here. Jay Slim back in here. So Michael Jordan Jr. in North Carolina. <laughs> Breeze, what's up, buddy? Got to play against the old players. Yeah, we'll see if we can we can see if we can set that up. Thanks for the follow there, Easy Breezy. Eight scholarships. Yeah. Well, you know the first uh, the first stream that we did with, here with North Carolina, we had eleven, and I think we brought in eight guys. That's where. This big old class with Ivan Ross and Eric Tice and Shay Thornton. I think they were all in that class. Brian Joyner as well. And then a handful of other guys that have trickled out for one reason or another. Uh, I think that was we brought in a couple of JUCOs is, is what it was. But, you know, we, we need pretty much everything. But yeah, I would take a player at every position. Uh, and we'll need two players at some positions. So, getting the recruiting set up will just be the usual. We'll go position by position, bring in these interested guys. And see what we end up with. We'll try to, if we can identify some bums early, we'll try to cut it out so we can get a good mix. Because I don't want to load up on these one and done guys that would really kind of be counterproductive to what we're, I mean, we're trying to rebuild with this class. One and doneers really don't get that mission accomplished. What? Oh, you got it live thanks to Discord. That's awesome. Yeah, it's always good to have people join us live. We got a, a ton of interest. We need... I, I wonder if I should be limiting some of these top guys and just bouncing straight down to the bottom. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to be harsh with our, with our indie camp reviews. Anybody that doesn't shine at Indy, you know, I'm not even waiting for the regional camps. They're just going straight to the cut block. All right, kind of limited interest from centers there, so we can go back and pick up. Uh, shoot, what do we need the most? Point guards, shooting guards. Small forwards, too. So we'll add a couple more of these guys on here onto our list that gets us to 50 then we can bounce over to call and watch and then yeah after indy we'll go through yeah we're gonna have to make some cuts breeze we're gonna have to be a little bit harsh just because we got to bring in a lot of players and i would prefer to bring in some guys that i know or at least i have reason to believe will be around so uh, as far as first week hosting let's go through here i usually like oh man i usually like to try to bring in guys within region like some of the top guys within region look all these five star guys out of region there's one. Uh, so it's there's only one five star guy interested in us in the entire America East region. All right. So new plan. Invite anybody that'll come. <laughs> we got plenty of budget. We're not going to be worried about that. It, it, at this point, it's just going to be uh, identifying the right targets, getting the right mix of one and done guys, so that we can compete next year, along with guys that are going to stick around and help build the program. Uh, I think if we're if we Think about targeting one-and-done positions. Uh, in my opinion, it would be shooting guard and small forward. <laughs> you always get real confused about the what's up, Breeze. <laughs> I thought Chris had the uh, the chat hooked up on those. All right, so let's get our camp information. And let's go through a round of preliminary cuts here before we start doing more hosting. Ooh, top 10, top 10. De uh, maybe we'll hold on to the decent guys and 
drop these guys that didn't stand out. Oh, that's a lot of the four star folks. A lot of the four star folks did not stand out. All right, so now let's bounce back over here so I can be a little bit more aware. So we probably, right, we got notes on him. It should be these top four. It should be Evans and Montrose didn't stand out. And then we can get to Ray Calhoun. He's got interest. We have no notes. So this is where the new guys start. So pick it up with Calhoun. Add in Lockhart. And of course, I mean, we won't have the note. We won't have the indie notes on these guys, but we can get regional notes. And, you know, if they're top five, top ten regional, you know, we'll know we're on pretty uh, steady ground. So random task in the chat. What's up, buddy? Glad to have you in here. Ooh, top five, top five. MVP at Indy is Jeremy Barnes. All right. That's definitely a guy that we would like to go ahead and bring in. Uh, Towns didn't go to Indy, so he must have been uh, one of our East Coast Jam guys. We'll go out and make sure he was in the top five. Same with Andre Mack. And we're already... Wait a minute. Oh, all right, all right. With you. Ooh, top five at Vegas. Ooh, there's a good one. Go ahead and scout him, too. Decent. Eh. Didn't go. Didn't stand out. All right. Kyle Williams. You are the cut man. Do we not have anything past that? Didn't stand out. Didn't stand out. Now, we can go... He has interest. He's four stars. We have no notes. So we'll figure him out at regional. No interest. Four star with interest. Four star with interest. And I think that's our list. Yep. All right, moving on. We're adding this extra little step in here. So recruiting will take about an extra five, ten minutes this, this go around. Uh, shouldn't be all that bad, though. MVP top 10. Nick Jones looking solid. I see guys like this. These five star guys around number 25. When you get a top 10 at Indy, MVP at Vegas, like that guy could be one of those that sticks around two, three, even four years. He could be one and done. It all it happens. But he could stick around. So I like to bring them in for sure. Max Peterson's out. All right, that was everything. So we only got one out. We only got one of those small forwards out. Got a lot of talent there. Top 10 at Indy. 25, 25. Decent. Tyron Tebbs. You're off the list. My man. Decent. You're off as well. So it gives us two. He didn't go to Indy. All right, where are we at here? Picking it up here. And there. Now we can check the centers. Then we'll just have to purge the list one more time after we get done with regionals, but probably not. We're getting rid of most of the worst ones. Everybody else, if, if they were at least decent at Indy, you can pretty well bet they're going to be top 25. What is this? Oh, yeah, Justin Hopper out of Missouri. We're going in. We're encroaching on the Tigers' old territory. Yeah, Chuck, can't performances end all be all for me. Absolutely. There, Jay Slim says all the talent's always a small forward. You're right. There's a, there's always this weird thing. The, the small forwards are always so super talented. And then... Um, the, the bad, you know, the bad thing, the downside to that is that's the position that I have the least success in actually recruiting. We didn't have a ton of centers on the list, so we're not going to worry about that. Let's get all positions. Oh, I need to be on our call watch list. Uh, yeah, so I always have the toughest time recruiting it. That's where all the talent is, and I always have a tough time recruiting it. I will say I've had a handful of guys that I've grabbed there that were like ND, MVP elites or whatever. Sh championships every time. Obviously, those weren't on stream, but... Uh, 
what else? Oh, we got all our calls and all that good stuff in uh, already. So we're good to go here. You started four small forwards once. You know, I, I'm happy to start five talented players. I don't care. As long as I got one guy that can rebound and play defense on the inside and one guy that can handle the ball, uh, the rest of the positions I could honestly care less. I just want talent. So let's get through these summer camps. But yeah, for sure, the, the camp data, you can always tell. That is the end-all, be-all for sure. Because, I mean, it's actually watching them on the court, right? What better way is there to measure performance than put them on the court and see who looks the best? You know, who plays better than the other ones? So, yeah, that's that's absolutely the, the way to go about top five at Indy. So, yes, please. Top five at Indy, yes, please. All right, let's make that three in a row. And we can go ahead... Seeing as how we're at 100%, we can go ahead and unlock this without any drama. All right. So now we'll just skip ahead, see who's got interest, see what's going on. Absolutely. This is the way. This is how you do it, 100%. Anybody can tell you that. All right, we're on a dead period, so... Ah, Barnes, not a great visit. Let's see how some of these visits have gone. See if any of these are awesome. Knox enjoyed it. Blackwell had an awesome visit. Good to see. Barnes said it was cool. Daryl Willie, awesome visit. Okay. Oh, and Daryl Willie, I figured he would have been the... Oh, look at that. See, this is a really good range, too. So, top 25 at Indy, top 5 at Vegas. I would have preferred him be the MVP. But, I mean, when you're in that 22 range, like, this is the range from about, from, like, 15 to 25. That's the range of guys that, like, they're definitely threatening to be a two- or three-year player. So, I always, it's interesting to... Uh, consider them especially since he went straight to hot so it's good to keep it in mind let's go ahead and give him a call unlock these i mean if he started four small forwards and he had i mean i'm assuming that that means he had some serious talent at small forward and if you got serious talent you're gonna win so i bet it worked out just fine for him but we can let him answer that Yeah, we're coming up on the good period for CBGM streams. We ought to be able to get, um, you know, hopefully Chris does some live reveals. I know Coach Fury and I have already talked about doing another preview like we did last year. Uh, maybe some predictions, something like that. So it's coming up on a real fun part of the CBGM, especially, you know, just parts that lend themselves to streaming. So that'll be, it's always fun. Uh, more hosting. Let's see. Let's do this by position now. Oh, hold on. No, we still got to get through the last two camps. That's right. All right. So now that that's done, top 25 at Indy. Oh, and he didn't even go. All right. He's a five-star guy. All right. That doesn't do much for me. Top 10 at Indian, didn't go to a camp. You know what? Let's go ahead and uh, spring them both in. I figured out the other day, I did the math. All right, so he's top 10. Could work harder. I'm not crazy about that. Especially if I could get something really interesting. All right, top 5 at Big Apple is kind of interesting. So those can be our three for today. But yeah, I did the math the other day. You get 30 in-home visits before, or 30 on-campus visits before the in-home start. Look at that, Ray Calhoun straight to hot. Now, that's a good one. He's a hardworking kid. He was top five at the Big Apple. Let's see if he didn't stand out at the East Coast Jams. Let's go through this real quick. So yeah, Leonard Kincaid had an awesome visit. Ray Calhoun had an awesome visit. Indy Camp results. 
Okay, so he wasn't in the top five. He wasn't, I mean, surely to God he wasn't a, no. Andre Mike, Eric Towns. All right, he wasn't a top five guy, but that's all right. Ooh, Mike Smith. Where's he at? Out of Connecticut. Are we in on him? We should be in on him. Wonder how he did at America East. Nope. Not as good as Ray Calhoun. All right. So Ray Calhoun looking solid. Uh, we got a couple of good ones here. Bum, bum, uh, 31st. I'm trying to do the math. How many? Yeah, let's go. Let's do. Uh, so we got, well, let's do a round of hosting at each position here. Just so we can get a good spread of guys. And then once we once we do a round of hosting at each position, we'll see what kind of interest we've got, see if we've got targets that we're happy with, and then uh, any positions where we need to do a little bit of extra work, we can do that. So it's just my thinking as I work through this. Sorry that this recruiting's a little bit slower, but when you gotta fill eight spots, you gotta be a little bit more uh, you know, a little bit more intentional about what you're doing. You can't just shotgun it, so to speak. I think he's I think Daryl Willie's a a good one to, to look at for sure. We're on August seventh, cruising along. We get power forwards and centers. When we do the centers we'll actually have top ten lists, so then we ought to have still six more visits after that. Where we can, uh, didn't stand out at Indy. We should have maybe cut him, but he was top 25 at Vegas. I don't know. Top 10 at Memphis. Would prefer these guys be top 25ers at Indy. If we've got them, which we really don't here at Power Forward. I mean, we've got them in the five-star guys. We don't have any of the lower-rated guys. So it looks like Power Forward doesn't really have any of these kind of uh, diamonds in the rough, necessarily. Maybe Nahara. He's probably the lowest-rated one that's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good regional camp rating. All right, now we're on to the centers. Gotta go for Hopper, right? He's top five at Houston, top twenty-five at Indy. We got the the pipeline state. Oh look, he's hot on Missouri too. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can steal him. Maybe I should lay off. What do y'all think? Shout out in chat. If Hopper, if I've got a shot at Hopper, should I should I do Missouri dirty or lay off and show a little bit of respect to the uh, the guys that got me going here? All right, so top twenty-five. Ugh. Ugh. The good news is we need a lot of uh, Mark Robinson. I mean, maybe all we can really do here. And Hopper. <laughs> I, I think th those are really our two best options. I mean, look, this guy didn't even stand out at the Big Apple. He's got to go. So does he. These guys are terrible. All right, we don't have a lot of good options at center. All right, top five at Houston. Okay, that's fine. No mercy. Chuck says no mercy. Jay Slim says take him. They should have increased my budget. That's exactly right. Had they increased my budget, I'd be recruiting him to Missouri. But instead, they had to mess around. And uh, so now, you know, it's going to be ugly for him. Awesome time from Justin Claggett. Nahara enjoyed it. Kyle Dodd had an awesome time. Clyde Walter. 
Mark Robinson had an awesome visit. That was that top center. So we got Tice, Joyner, and Medley. So two seniors plus the freshman all on the Norton. Let's see, Jarrett Medley coming in at number six. He's got a legit shot to win this. Random Task also says Missouri should have paid me. So looks like we're going to be ruthless about it. All right, so he, we're hot here. He was decent at Indy. Mark Robinson said he had an awesome visit. Look, he's hot on Missouri. How's he like Missouri more than us? That's messed up. Top 25, top 5 at Houston. And then top 25, top 5 at Houston. I mean, if they're all things being equal, right? Robinson and Hopper were both top 25 at Indy and top 5 at Houston. Robinson's one and done. Hopper's going to be here for four years. Like, and we got the we got the end. Uh, yeah, I feel like doing them dirty. We have to. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing here. I hope that the uh, mad Iowa Hawkeye guy. Uh, I'm sure if he's not in chat right now, he's gonna give me a ton of grief on YouTube. But uh, we've we've got to go ahead and do that, man. And you know, I'm sorry, but it just has to be done. Uh, all right, let's see. All right, he was decent top 10 at Memphis. Ugh. I think Kyle Dodd's actually better because he was at least decent in top five as opposed to top 10. But if we keep going up, we got a top 25 guy, hardworking kid. Top 10, so a little bit better there. Uh, and top 25. So I think we, we're not really in on trailer though. Are we in on person? Yeah. Uh, more so than the others. All right, so we can throw an offer out there. A small forward we really want two targets so Justin Claggett should probably be one of them all right so he's kind of borderline so we could go either way uh honestly in this position I'd rather go up I think see if we got anybody yeah top five at Indy and I mean we're within striking distance so let's go big let's go on Chris Knox Ooh, we're up to hot with Colin Blackwell. He was at the top five as well. So there's your offer at the shooting guard position. And Willie. Yep. He'll be the secondary. And we still got two targets left, and we want them both to be point guards preferably. And it, this is working out. Top 25. Uh, looks like he didn't go to a regional camp. But uh, th that's an offer. And we already knew Ray Calhoun. So uh, now we've got all the offers out. We just need to unlock categories on these guys so that we're ready for the 11th. We got one week. We can we can unlock one or two. Easy Breezy asks if, if I feel dirty coaching at UNC. No, absolutely not. Tar Heel Blue, baby. Michael Jordan, James Worthy. I mean, home at the Dean Smith Dome. Like, of course not. It's North Carolina. It's just tradition. It's it's awesome. If I was coaching at Kentucky, I would feel dirty. I mean, there's no if about it. I would just never do that ever in my entire life under any circumstances. But, no, nah, there's nothing dirty about coaching in North Carolina. Get out of here with that. Nothing wrong with the Tar Heels. I feel real good about it. You know, I was telling people when I was at Missouri, they were asking, like, where would you leave to go? And this was one of the, like, four schools I said. I would have left to go to Michigan State, Arizona, Kansas, or UNC. That was pretty much it. We were all set a couple of streams before I went to UNC. We were all set to go to Michigan State. And then uh, apparently Chris is allergic to Michigan State or something. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened. Uh, they stole his lunch money when he was a kid or something like that. Chris hated Michigan State. And so I figured it would just be cruel to make him, you know, do like a 
make a Michigan State graphic and post it every week and all this other stuff. I, I just I would have felt bad. I would have felt bad about that. So I, I let Michigan State go. At that point, it was either Kansas, Arizona, or UNC. There was only three places I was going. One of them offered. Here I am. Chuck Exotic says, Petey Pablo, raise up. That's right, take your shirt off. All right, so Colin Blackwell already deciding. I can't remember how high we were on Blackwell's list, which uh, I don't know if this is good or bad. Eh, he went to Oregon. Okay. That's all right. We will survive. But I do need to know, yeah, he was the shooting guard, really high shooting guard. Towns is also gone. All right, so we're still in on Willie. Let's see. Tolliver was top five at Indy. We're not in on him, though. Not in on Barnes. And that's a shame, because that's the Indy MVP. And we're just not on his list. We can't compete for that. All right, so Willie, we're looking really good. Adrian Lewis. Eh, we're in the running. We're, we could do something. Nowhere to be seen on Collier. Nowhere to be seen for Morris or Watkins. Flick, did we even, did we visit? No, we didn't bring any of these guys in. Okay. Let's find out the ones that we actually want. Top 25 at Indy, you. Why do I not have any camp data on Flick? Oh, decent. No. Okay, no. Didn't stand out at the Big Apple. You don't even need to be on my list right now. Didn't stand out. You don't need to be on my list. No. All right. Let's bounce over to point guard and come back to that. Uh, actually, wait. So at point guard, we've got a freshman that's doable. Like, so at each of these positions, when I'm going through, I'm going to try to figure out, like, do we want the one and done or do we want the four-year guy? At point guard, we're all right. I'm more interested in the four-year guy here. So we'll make our visit to Calhoun first. Now, shooting guard, we want a one and done guy. It's just a matter of whether we're in on one or not. Because we're really, I mean, we're just not in on Tolliver or Barnes or Mac. We're in on Willie. So that's the best shooting guard we're in on. So that's going to be our visit. And then past that. Decent in top five. Decent at Houston. Ugh. Not Collier. There we go. Daryl Morris. Daryl Morris should be our other target. Out of Kentucky. All right. All right, so we'll get that offer out. We've already got the visit scheduled. Let's go ahead and throw, I mean, just host these guys. All right, small forward, we definitely would like to focus on a really uh, top-notch guy. Let's see, where's Claggett? Top 25, in, uh, top five at Indy, and we're in his top 10. All right, we're swinging for the fences right here. Let's see, he's in California, so we definitely want to go with the school prestige pitch for him. And then, yeah, power forward will be our last visit. Top 25 at Indy. Decent. Top 5 at Big Apple. And did this guy even go to a regional? He did not. All right, so we're seventh there. We're number one here. We got to go with Kyle Dodd. Let's clear up the rest of those interest things, but Kyle Dodd, we're going location. All right, so there's our four visit, uh, our four in-home visits. We've already got all of our invites out for campus visits. So let's see if we can't grab a couple of these guys. I'd like to at least grab two of them. <laughs> Ready to beat you down in CBGM? Uh, you know what? I think uh, I, I think I'm gonna have a. I might have a better year than I did last year. I just got such a better defined score than I did last year. Uh, last year, my team had like a lot of stars, but not really defined positions, so it was super weird.
here we go. Four decisions. This looks like at least three guys that we visited, so I'm hoping we pull at least two, if not three, of these guys. Daryl Willie, coming. Derek Person, oh, he's going to Georgetown. That was the one I wasn't sure if we visited. Chris Knox is coming. That was our swing for the fences, small forward, and we pulled in Ray Calhoun, the four-year point guard. So we went, we got two. We got our point guard, we got our shooter, uh, we got our small forward. Oh, no, we got three, my bad. We also got our uh, small forward shooting guard. We got everything but the big guy, right? Because we visited a power forward, Kyle Dodd. So, right, we visited Dodd? Yeah, he just wouldn't come. Well, let's go talk to him again. And let's do it all again. So back to point guard. We're still hot on Leonard Kincaid. This is where our offer is. Now, we're not in this top 10 right now. But we were, so we, we're we not that far back. Now, it would probably be really smart to pull this offer and move down. But, you know, we've, we've, we're set here. We don't have to do too much. So let's just keep uh, fighting for that undefeated season now, right? Because like, now we're just waiting on... Uh, now we're just waiting on the beer bath, right? That's what y'all are... All hot and heavy on now. Daryl Morris, we're right in there. We can give him the old location pitch. At small forward. Back in here on Justin Claggett. Uh, I don't even think we need to do anything. We can just go straight school prestige. And now we do need to find another offer at power forward. Oh, that's the reason Kyle Dodd didn't come. We didn't offer him. We offered the wrong person. I'm a dummy. How did I not pick that up? All right, so we're good now. Coming for that NIT championship. Hey, NIT, I, I got that right now. Like, in North Carolina here on the stream, my last, my last season, I grabbed the national championship. The first season of the CBGM, went ahead and grabbed that NIT. You know, a little runner-up trophy there. All right, let's see for you guys uh, wanting to play any of my old players. So what we're looking for, uh, well, we'd want to play Wisconsin. Uh, we'd always want to play Missouri if we could grab them. Who are the other ones? Was Pitt one of them? Let's just go through here and see if anything jumps out. If y'all see anything you really like, Purdue, Creighton, yeah. Wisconsin. All right, so we can go on the road to. Well, the thing is, though, we don't want to play those this year. They're going to be sitting out. So let's see if we can add Missouri in anywhere. No. So let's let's add a game at IU, or IU coming to us. Uh, we can go ahead and we can go ahead and add Wisconsin. Get a couple of fun games in there. So. Uh, you know, our guy can sit over there on the bench and cheer against us all he wants to, but you know what we're going to do to those Badgers. Now, uh, NIT champion means we got hosed. Oh, I already see commits down there. I know we got at least two. Kyle Dodd coming. That was a power forward. Leonard Kincaid. Ah, oh, we couldn't catch up to Nova, but we did grab Daryl Morris. All right, so Justin Claggett still hasn't decided. Okay. So we're still at, we're having a pretty good, pretty good recruiting session so far. All right, so we haven't visited Hopper at all yet, which is not good. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and jump in on him now. Let's also see, is James Simmons worth anything? Yeah, he's top 10. Okay. So we can host him. We can go ahead and clear up the pitch categories. All right, we do need to find another point guard. Josh Peterson has got a lot of interest, although we're not in his top 10. Ronnie Rowe didn't stand out at no. And Pfizer, no. All right, so we can, we can offer Josh Peterson. We can visit him and talk about playing time. But uh, if, if we don't land him, 
sorry, there's something flying around me. If we don't land him, then, you know, when you got eight scholarships, you've got to be ready to roll some of them over to the next season. So we're going to be perfectly content to do that. We grabbed a couple of shooting guards and Willie and Daryl Morris. We're good there. This thing is like right in my face. <laughs> Look, you pull in the not worthwhile letters. Well, you, you got to figure. I mean, yeah, I'm still on brutal recruiting here, but I got a hundred rated recruiting coach, whereas in CBGM we're rocking the 50s. And I guarantee, after winning that national championship, my prestige here is much higher than whatever your your school's prestige is in CBGM. So uh, we can go ahead and hit him with school prestige again. We're number one on his list. This this is really a can't miss at this point. All right, so we're in on Claggett, the point guard, and the center, uh, Hopper. Uh, we've got our other five, right? Yeah, we got our other five. So let's see if any of these, do we want either of these guys as sort of a backup option? Yes. Phil Campbell would be solid. So we can make another visit there. Yeah, I mean, this, the, the brutal recruiting, the only thing I would do differently is pay more attention like it's harder to get in on somebody that you don't have any business on like go back when i was on that point guard and i said the smart thing to do would be to back off because we fell out of his top 10 that's the difference on normal recruiting i still probably could have pulled him on brutal i should have backed off of him and gone somewhere else i thought maybe we could jump back into it just based on the strength of my coach's recruiting rating and having a good visit and you can see it didn't work out on normal that would have worked so it's just doing stuff like that being smart with your offers claggett done Peterson going to Marquette and Hopper going to Oklahoma. So he didn't go to Missouri, uh, but he also didn't come here. So if we didn't get him, I would have rather him have gone to Missouri. So that kind of sucks. All right, so we said point guard-wise, we didn't have anything else we were interested in whatsoever. Shooting guard, we've already pulled in two. I mean, there's nothing says we can't uh, visit and offer Tolliver. All right. What's it hurt, right? Bringing in talent. We can put them on the floor somewhere. Small forward. We are set. Power forward. We're set. Center. We don't have any other options. So at least one of these scholarships is rolling over. But uh, it's kind of a good thing uh, that center is where we're lacking at because we did get the red shirt in. So we're good to go here. We got our visits in. We can bounce back out. See where these last... Uh, these last few guys commit, and then we can take a look at this class overall. And then we're jumping into the season, see if we can go back to back, baby. Try not to cry. That's a decent. That's a decent uh, tip. All right, Chris and Tolliver couldn't go in and yank him out at the last second. So let's take a look here. We don't have any offers out. We got a six-man class. I think we're going to stand pat here with this six-man class because it's pretty solid. When you look at this, Knox is a one-and-done type of talent. Claggett and Willie, both five-star guys, but they're five-star guys in that range that they could stick around for a while. So we, And then when you add in Daryl Morris, we really added some depth there at those swing positions. And then Kyle Dada and Daryl Morris are going to be guys that stick around. So we take a look here. Daryl Morris, he's top 25 at Indy, MVP at Memphis. That's a baller. No other way to put it. Ray Calhoun, um, he, we don't have a note from him on Indy. He was top five at Big Apple, so he should be solid. The great thing is we don't need him day one. This is a great guy to develop over a couple of years, but we're already going to have a point guard unless we lose him to transfer. Kyle Dodd at the power forward. He was decent at Indy, top five at the Big Apple. Again, good guy to have around he's going to develop just fine he'll come in solid i mean he could start at teams like like some of these lower power five teams like uh you know uh i don't know boston college or maryland or like you know not north carolina and duke but some of those teams that are trying to grow you know guys like this would be fine to start but i'm saying even on a team like this where my goal is to win national championships my goal is to go undefeated my goal is to win two three four national championships in a row these are still guys that are going to be fine. They're going to develop just fine. Chris Knox, this is some one-and-done talent here. He was top five at Indy, one of the top five players in the country. So he will definitely be one of the leaders and stepping into a position of need as Shea Thornton graduates and we lost Wall. 
And then right behind him will be Justin Claggett. Uh, he was also top 25 at Indy and top five at Vegas. I think he's in the right range. We could get two or three years out of him, but we're definitely going to want to build some depth there going forward. And then Daryl Willey, uh, same kind of position, top 25 at Indy, top five at Vegas. In the position, he could be around for two or three years. You never really know with these guys. Uh, but, man, when they stick around, they're just so unstoppable. Like when you've got guys this talented that turn into juniors and seniors, that's when you got real chances at going undefeated then because you got such a better chance winning games on the road with experienced players, being able to really stick into your sets. You don't let them freelance as much. So uh, we got a – that's a crazy oh, – it's not BC slander random task. I'm, I'm not saying BC's bad. I'm just saying they're not North Carolina, Duke, Kentucky. Uh, it's just a different, uh, different level is all I'm saying. You know what? I mean, I think Louisville's pretty close to that upper level in basketball, but like Louisville football, they're not they're not epic or anything. Like they have some good years, and then they have some really just awful years. So uh, we'll use Louisville football as the tier of team I'm talking about, as to not offend anyone else. I'll just I'll just eat all the the shame of their averageness myself. All right, guys, let's get through this practice. I'm ready for some games, baby. Oh, we're going into November. Here come the games. Oh, loosen up. Get ready. It's time to have a party. It took us 46 minutes to get through that recruiting. I usually try to get it in under 30. So we definitely had, with the bigger uh, group of scholarships to get through, it definitely took a little longer. I prefer to not have any more than four scholarships in a given year, but and we had four guys transfer out, and that hurt. Red shirt reminder. All right, so now... Uh, even knowing we didn't have uh, we didn't have anybody else that needed to be redshirted, we're good. <laughs> St. Louis has a great football team that hadn't lost since 1940. Oh, wow, that's amazing! No losses since 1940. How do they do it? <laughs> you know what? I actually, sh pretty accomplished high school football player myself. I haven't lost a game in uh, almost 20 years. So, we got that going for us. All right, let's get on it. Oh, depth chart, depth chart, depth chart. We talked about it earlier. We didn't do it because we know the AI likes to reset when they get uh, halfway through it. What's good, kid for life? Glad to have you in the chat. Hawks coach got fined for his comment about Nick's bias, says Breeze. Hey, random task. You didn't have to say that part out loud, buddy. I was in, I was in on it with you. I knew where you were coming with it. Let's check out this depth chart. I think everybody in chat knew, but you never know. Oh, they're wanting to start Rodgers at small forward. No, that's not going to happen. Who is this? Walk on. No. No, 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 no. You're definitely above him. God, our problem is a garden forward. Like we have we only have two guards and one forward. So we definitely need Nick Rogers to be playing back up at small forward, I suppose. And then we gotta see, are the, any of these walk on guards even reasonable? So not really, is I guess the answer. Nick Rogers doesn't really have a jumper. See, well, hmm. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. All right. I mean, the the guards all stink. That's going to be our Achilles for sure. Thornton Tice, Medley Thomas, Rogers, who is going to be playing small forward minutes. Uh, I guess we'll just do that. And then let the AI suggest a matrix, see what it comes up with. Ugh. Yeah, so gross. Can this Cartinson guy, can he play any guard? 
can't score. He can kind of play defense. Yeah. How tall is he? Yeah, maybe we let him. Where's Cartington? All right, that's a that's sort of better. I think we can play like this. <laughs> Shamwell says, "So you and Gonzaga are playing football?" Yeah. Uh, something tells me it might be a defensive struggle. I don't think you'd see a lot of points on the board there. All right, baby, on the road, first game of the year. Let's get it started off right. Woo, getting by. Look at Medley in his first game as a college freshman, going all double-double MVP on us. So that's on the road with, what, two? We got three seniors and two freshmen starting. It's a really super interesting mix because the one of the two freshmen is at point guard, which is the one position you do not want a freshman at, preferably. Uh, but but we're gonna have to do it this year. So you know that's the thing. Had had some of those guys come back, I think we had a real good shot at back to back. You know, uh, struggling for that undefeated season, whatever. I mean, we're still gonna be a monster. We're we still absolutely just on medley alone. We got final four potential, but we will have our struggles on the road here and there. So I don't see any beer bath happening tonight. Uh, DePaul. DePaul at North Carolina. Woo, there we go. Medley again leading the way. Eric Tice, Kevin Harris. All right. Well, freshman coming on. Coming on. Having two out of the three top top performers being freshmen. Love to see that. But even more so, love to see Jarrett Medley uh, living up to expectations for sure. When you play with such a stacked roster, do you have guys get pissed more frequently because there's not enough playing time? Uh, eh, sometimes. I, I don't pay too much attention to it. Uh, just because, like, I mean, if because on these settings where I'm at right now with my coach level, with the school that I'm at, I don't have to pay too much attention to it. Uh, I could bring in six guys that are all, I mean, those six guys that I brought in next year, given the fact that a couple of them are uh, really highly touted, I could throw those six freshmen out there and be competitive for a Final Four. So if I lost everybody off of this team, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Six LOIs means everybody qualified as per the usual. Good to go there. So, yeah, I don't pay too much attention to it. I don't have a lot of them leaving. You know, it's more rare that you see those. And when you when I see one that's having a lot of issues with playing time, I look to see if I can get ways to get them more uh, involved. But, uh, you know, it's really not as much of an issue as you probably think about it if you haven't dealt with it, if you haven't played with rosters like that before. So Washington coming in. Let's see if we can send them back to the West Coast with a big fat L. Ooh, big 30-point L. Now, I don't know what Medley was doing two rebounds, but the boy was scoring points, that's for sure. Drops 23. So he is definitely off to a hot start. North Carolina off to a 3-0 start. Getting going. Be a very exciting game if you close your eyes and use your imagination. Uh, I think Random Task is still on the uh, Gonzaga-St. Louis football game there. So, yeah, I think that'd probably go... Uh, pretty much exactly how you think it would go all right now we got our game at wisconsin so i don't remember which recruit went over here but let's see now i would imagine we're going to struggle in this one this looks like a really strong team we're on the road i've got to think this is a probable loss but we could pull something out you never know like that's the thing with having these extremely talented freshmen is sometimes they can just put you on their back. So we'll see. I expect to lose here. I didn't expect Louisville to lose by 20 at home to St. Mary's. I wonder if that was a tournament game. Maybe that was a neutral court game, but that looks bad. Woo! There we go. That's what I just say about your talented freshman putting you on your back, and then you saw who was following it up with Shea Thornton, the senior. Eight points and 14 rebounds, and there we go, showing what's his name, why he should have never transferred. Was that Dieter that went to Wisconsin? Yeah, you should have stayed in Chapel Hill. There's no reason to be out there at Wisconsin. Uh, we're we're winning. We're, we're winning. We're hanging banners at UNC. We're making a run at all those old records. Like I'm gonna try to put teams out there that make people forget all about like James Worthy and Vince Carter, Antoine Jameson. Uh, I don't think I can find anybody that'll make them forget Jordan. But you know, everything short of that, we're going for it here. 
all out. All out. <laughs> it's hard to rebound when all your shots go in the basket. Uh, that's a that's a valid argument. That's a valid argument. I could go for that. All right. So we're on to four and zero. Got USC coming in. They don't look great this year. So hopefully we don't slip up. Nope. Jarrett Medley just going across the board. Another double double for him. So very clear. Uh, just an absolute star in Jarrett Medley. And like I said, if we've got any shot at uh, repeating as national champions, uh, it's going to be because of Jarrett Medley. You know, we, we've got, I mean, you, we've got the right supporting pieces in place. Joyner's solid. Thornton's solid. Tice is solid. Uh, Harris is good enough. Uh, but Medley is what pushes us over the top. And, and we really need more of that this year than even we did last year because this year we just have no depth. Plenty of depth on the inside, but no depth at guard. Like, no help back there. We don't have, like, last year we could have LOE come in or Thornton come in and do some help if, if Wall or Dieter wasn't performing. This year we do not have that. It needs to be the inside guys. I'm even halfway tempted to go back to strategy and go from favor inside to heavy inside. I'm actually very tempted to do that the more I think about it. Because really with this kind of team, like, you just want to feed Medley. All right, so another very likely road loss. Yep, nine points. And there you see, that's what... Oh, uh, was that Medley that just got hurt? I mean, if he's hurt, we're no more than a Sweet 16 team. Hopefully this isn't bad. Severe back pain. He's out for two months. So, not great news, but he'll be back by February. Uh, and if we were going to eat an injury... You know, on the inside is where we could afford it. Uh, this will affect our seeding, but it doesn't do anything to affect our ability to make a Final Four run, make a national championship run. So let's just come in and adjust, and we can deal with it. it sucks. Uh, what it really does is takes him completely out of the running for the Norton. Because he very much, I mean, you could see in the early season, he was very much a threat to compete for that uh, Norton Award. Uh, it really puts him in a tough spot. It puts him in a tough spot going for like ACC Freshman of the Year or even NCAA Freshman of the Year. Uh, so that's a tough injury to lose him for two months. Doesn't affect our long-term goals, but certainly uh, going to affect his hardware, going to affect our record. And you're going to affect seeding at the end of the year. But we're still alive. What we are going to do, because now we go from we go from starting two freshmen to starting one freshman, and then like three, four seniors, something like that. We are going to change up our offensive set usage. I don't want to go too crazy because we do still have the freshman at point guard. Uh, but let's take a little bit of advantage of this, a little bit more of a uh, upperclassman-led team now. And see if that makes up for us some of what we're going to lose with having Medley out. So the Hoosiers coming in, number 12 versus number 9. Can we bounce back without Jarrett Medley? Oh, in a big way. Marshall Thomas in his first start, 24 excuse me, 24 point victory over the Hoosiers. So like I said, if there's anywhere that we could afford an injury, it was on the inside. Now in the NCAA tournament, we cannot afford not to have Jarrett Medley, but right now, especially in home games, we are fine. It's going to be those road games where we're going to lose, you know, a couple more than like, like at Illinois at Louisville. Those are games that were winnable with Medley. Uh, I mean, not that they're unwinnable, but it's so much more difficult at this point. And yeah, Random Tass says he saw in the forums that Gary said it was better to go favor than it was to go heavy on either inside or outside. And certainly with the injury to Medley, uh, any thought of going heavy inside is out the window. 
We're going to keep it like it is, though. We do still have a lot of talent on the inside. I'm happy favoring the inside slightly. I mean, I, I would favor the inside just like in basketball overall, right? It's a higher percentage shot. So if you can get it inside, especially if that's where your talent is, why not go for it? But uh, here we are. You know, the good news is we're 6-1. and one. We're playing fine. We're working through this injury. Got the corn huskers coming into the Dean Dome. We're, we're slid all the way. We started off the season number one. We've slid all the way back to number 10. But now we got the corn huskers. Hopefully, you know, no slip ups. No dumb losses, please. Nah. No dumb losses. Look, look, it's seniors. That's seniors and juniors getting it done. I think Ivan Ross is the senior. I think Marshall Thomas is a junior. Um. But, I mean, they're just getting it done. What is up? High five, Pete. We're making a run. We're trying to go back to back. We had an injury to our highly, to you know our number one recruit uh, on the inside. So we're surviving that. It's only two months. He'll be back for tournament time. We landed a six-man recruiting class, rolling two scholarships over to the next year. Uh, landed some pretty good players there. So unless we have another weirdo mass exodus of transfers... Uh, you know, this year we should compete. Next year we will compete. No way around it. All right, so I'm thinking on the road against Illinois is a winnable game. They're 5-4. and four. Nah, I don't worry about the poll's lack of faith. I worry about the record. The poll, who cares about a poll? Like, in college football, polls matter. In college basketball, polls do not matter. So I could care less about the poll. They can put whatever number next to me they want. Sometimes it's cool for like a small school to jump up into the top 25. And, you know, and it's always cool to be number one. But like I just, uh, there's, I don't put any weight into it. I could care less. On the road against Illinois, let's see if we can get this done. You know, I, I think we still got a shot. We lose our, our uber talent on the inside. But we got a more senior, junior and senior laden team. We're leaning a little bit heavier into our plays. Let's see if we can make this happen. Yay, uh, 16 points. Look at Marshall Thomas going off. Look at Marshall Thomas going off. He said, uh, who was it? Who, who got hurt? <laughs> uh, I'm the center. I just went off for 31. Pretty sure that's a high-scoring game from a center on this team this year. So uh, we can check Jarrett Medley here. 36 more days. And in the meantime, Marshall Thomas is making hay while the sun shines. God, I mean, he's got the inside shooting. He doesn't quite have the scoring. And he doesn't have, like, the bucket getter and stuff. But he's got that experience. He's got the ability. And he's making it happen. So this is why you just bring in talent. You just bring talent in through the door. And good things happen. You don't worry too much about position. You know, we're a little bit out of whack. We're a little bit heavy on the inside. Hey, sometimes it works out. You know, we redshirted a guy in there. We got an injury. And we still got more than enough depth to be going right now. So you know, no worries. No worries at all. But then we got to start off ACC play on the road against your favorite team, the Louisville Cardinals. Medley has a sore back. So 30 more days on him. So nothing too bad, but you definitely don't want, I mean, a sore back in a big man. I mean, that's about the worst thing I can think of, except for, you know, a bad wheel like Greg Oden or something. Like, you don't want them, their feet and ankles messed up. But other than that, back's about as bad as it gets, I think. So, so we're going to let him rest up. You will beat number one when you're unranked there, Shamwell. Yeah, I mean, it, it can happen for sure, especially early in the season. Some of the early season rankings are pretty wonky, so I mean, you can grab a number one C, uh, a number one team there that's completely undeserving. Like my CBGM Louisville team last year, they started off ranked like number five like this. They were terrible. They went to the NIT. They had nobody that could really score. Uh, 
All right, so on the road here against the Cardinals to open up ACC play, probably a tough win. Not undoable, but probably tough. Easier if we had Medley. But you never know. Maybe Marshall Thomas goes down and says, who's Medley? So let's see if Marshall Thomas can uh, make us forget all about the superstar uh, freshman here. North Carolina at the Yum Center playing the Louisville Cardinals. Can't get it done. Brian Joyner tried. Marshall Thomas put in an effort, but there wasn't a lot of help there. And uh, Chris Mack and the Cardinals get the seven-point win. So not shocking, not unexpected. We knew we were going to struggle on the road here and there this year. But uh, I just hate losing. <laughs> I don't know. I hate losing. God, man, like, that's the games where those transfers really hurt you. Like, Think about how much better this team would be right now if you added LOE, Dieter, and Wall. Uh, I mean, jeez. First of all, they almost they have a lot better shot at being undefeated. Let's we'll see if we can get it back against the Hurricanes. On the road in Miami, yes, sir, by 15. Joyner Ross and Kevin Harris. So the freshman showed up on the road, did all right. Chuck <laughs> Chuck said Jarrett Medley's out hurt with a bad back because he got he got injured trying to carry all these upperclassmen. You know, I think you might be onto something there. That could be accurate. Oh, uh, that was a good one. But yeah, you can see, I mean, we're getting through just fine. A couple of losses here and there. I mean, he's probably under 30 days now. We'll have him back by the time we get to February. It'll be good to go. We got to avoid any further injuries. Excuse me. But we'll be all right. So we got, we're into January of 2036. I told y'all I wanted to do, what, one stream a week. But we are cruising right now. I don't remember. Somebody uh, helped me out. I don't know how many seasons I streamed uh, of last year's. I think it was like 2025, something like that. I said my goal was 50 this year. Right, well, I feel like we're well on our way. Because that's like 16 seasons. If you just do one a week, would be, what, four months. The game came out in February. I mean, it's not... We're still in May. We're a little bit ahead of schedule here. We're a little bit ahead of schedule. Especially, I think it came out in mid to late February, so... I'm trying to sneak in some weekend streams here and there. Just trying to push it a little bit further. And trying to not miss any week streams. Like we were kind of pushing it this week. I had to work late a couple of days. Some other stuff going on. All right. On the road against the Dukies. They're 7-6, 0-2 in the ACC so far. So we got to go into Cameron indoor, but they don't look like a great team this year. I expect a win. I don't care who's hurt. I don't care you know, if you're young, if you lost transfers. Go in there and beat a rival right now. Oh, we got smashed. Oh, and Marshall Thomas got hurt. All right. So that's what we couldn't do was have another injury that makes the problem even worse. So Marshall Thomas is done. He tore a knee tendon. So from all of the depth that we had at the beginning of the year, we said, yeah, let's go ahead and red shirt one of these centers. And now <laughs> this is worst case scenario, but we can still deal with it. All right, so Ivan Ross moves into the starting lineup. We move Marshall Thomas down to the very, very end of the bench. Good luck. Hope you come back next year better than ever. But uh, we got to keep moving on here. And so now this is going to have Ivan Ross playing 40 minutes a game. Because it's, it's got... Nothing on Nick Rogers. Nick Rogers, you're going to have to step up and play some center for us. Okay. That'll work better. All right, so we're hurting on the inside. And we just got absolutely thrashed on the road against Duke. And I'm assuming, hopefully, that had something to do with the injury. Maybe he got injured early in the game, and the the AI just stuck Ivan Ross in there and played him out the whole game, and it hurt us. I don't know, but you know that was definitely 
uh, not what I expected from a 7-6 and six, uh, Duke Blue Devils team. But they absolutely thrashed us. So let's see if we can get back to 500 in the ACC here. Yeah, easily. And Ivan Ross, Nick Rogers playing well. Kevin Harris, 22-point victory. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Hey, the your number two on a guy's list, but he has no interest. Is that before or after the August 21st update? August 21st is when the, the interest actually updates. I mean, it could just be a guy that really doesn't have interest anywhere. All right, now we got a little Notre Dame fighting Irish coming in. A little shout out to Agalia here. Hopefully we don't have to play against Agalia's uh, slew of point guards. All right, to get above 500, the Fighting Irish and the Tar Heels. Oh, he smashed him. Ivan Ross, Joyner, and Eric Tice with 13 rebounds. So Eric Tice showed up big time on the boards. Yeah, it's all right. High five Pete said bad luck with the injuries. You know, I mean, that happens. And, I mean, the only good thing about it is it's happening at a position that we just had so much depth at that uh, it's still very reasonable that we can push on. Uh, it does suck not to have Marshall Thomas for the tournament. That's for sure. On the road against the Demon Deacons. Let's see if we can get our first ACC road victory here. Yeah, yo, by nine. Harris, Ross, and Tice, baby. Eric Tice throwing down the double doubles. Eric Tice is a heck of a player. He's been overshadowed a little bit by Medley, by Thomas. Uh, but Eric Tice, heck of a player. Good to go. Yeah, get it to August 21st, see if it still happens there. You'll probably drop off the list after that. Because a lot of times, especially if you're at a small school, well, August 21st is the first day that they update. So especially if you're at a small school, you can start off with, like, cool interest, invite them to campus, they hate the visit, it goes straight to none, but then the list doesn't update until the 21st, so you, it's just not dynamic until then. So a lot of times that's what you see. I think they update every every week once you get past the 21st, but they do not update until then at all. All right, so rolling through, we're in mid-January. We're getting closer and closer to the return of our superstar freshman, Jarrett Medley. We're still very much surviving. Uh, the road games have been a little bit hit or miss, especially the one at Duke. Uh, but I'm going to chalk that one up to the Marshall Thomas injury and just pretend like it didn't happen. So... 12 and 3, 4 and 2 in the ACC, headed toward the end of January. So now we got Miami coming into the Dean Dome. The Hurricanes and the Tar Heels. Hopefully we put it down on them again. Pretty sure we already beat them on the road. I feel like they do not. Random Task asked if you call and ask. Uh, about interest level, whether or not you get an accurate representation. I don't think that you will. Not until after August 21st. All right, Miami coming into North Carolina. Headed back out with a big fat L. Ivan Ross, the senior. You know, he's third on the depth chart. Number one in your hearts. The senior just going out there and balling. Pulling in the double-double. Gets us another nice win. He's holding it down very nicely on the inside for us. And we move on to 13-3 and three overall, 5-2 and two in conference. Now we got to go on the road to Georgia Tech. Another team below 500 overall, not great in the ACC either. So, you know, these are games that if we were healthy, I would be saying these are absolutely should wins. As of now, like, I still expect to win this. All right. North Carolina, Georgia Tech. Yes, sir. Look at Ivan Ross. He's saying, why am I third? Like, why am I the third man out over here? I can drop 27. <laughs> Anything these guys do, I can do better. Yeah, Ivan Ross carrying it. I mean, so you can definitely, like, you can feel that whole uh, favor inside bit going, right? Because, I mean, centers and then Eric Tice 
have been leading the way the entire season, even though we've got an outstanding senior guard in Joiner in Joiner and a pretty good senior small forward in Shea Thornton. Uh, that favor inside, though, like you can just feel it, it over and over again. And I don't know if at this point I should pull back from that. I mean, Medley's about to come back, so ultimately, no, it would just be a waste of time. But at the same time, I still feel like inside is where we have the most depth. Oh, one day. Yeah, Chris, the top 10 list compared to the interest color is it's completely interest color up until you get to August 21st. August 21st and beyond, the top 10 list is extremely accurate. All right, so our man is back. Dun, 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 dun. Jarrett Medley, baby. Back in the starting lineup. So we still got Ross, Rogers. All right, yep. Matrix. Give us that Matrix. All right, Ivan Ross still getting his 14 a game. Rogers dropping down, playing some minutes at small forward. And then, you know, the poo poo platter of guards down here whatever but we got him back and that's perfect timing for number one pit the undefeated pittsburgh panthers coming into the dean dome to face a brand new Jarrett medley a brand new north carolina tar heel team they're back and better than ever ready to knock the panthers off their perch I feel like this is about the time, you know, we were undefeated last season, got to about this point, and ran into the wrong team on the road. Let's be that wrong team on the road for Pitt right here. Not number one off. The Panthers and the Tar Heels in Chapel Hill. Oh, and we can't do it. Medley had a huge game, but Shea Thornton suffers an injury, and that could be devastating. We cannot come back if he's out for any length of time. Ah, sprain toe, 11 days. All right, we couldn't make it happen. Couldn't make it happen. L let's see. I do want to see. Like, I want to look at these box scores. Like, did the injury have a big effect, or did we just not get it done? Now, Thornton played 31 minutes. Eric Tice got in bad foul trouble. That could have had an effect for sure. Oh, the 17 for 23 free throws for this dude could have had something to do with it. Oh, Ross Jackson, the freshman. No, so, I mean, he's just amazing. All right, well, I guess a better team won. That sucks. Random Task says need to get a second monitor. Yeah, I do. That's 100% correct. Uh, I've actually got a second monitor over there, but it's supposed to be for my kids so I can hook up this old PC and let them play, like, you know, whatever they play. Have I ever split time with good players at a position? Uh, so, I mean, I'll go, like, if I have two players that I just think are absolutely equal, I might go like 24 and 16 for the 40 minutes. But usually one of them's going to win out one way or another. <laughs> the Panthers that don't even wear pants. <laughs> oh, Brees. I do not know what that means, but uh, even their lack of pants wasn't enough for us to get that win. Now, hopefully, we get to get better against this Wake Forest team, and we do in a big way. Jarrett Medley does in a big way. 17 rebounds, 7 blocks. My goodness, the dude went off. So he's he's trying to be like, hey, don't forget about me for all the awards and stuff, guys. I'm still a good player over here. He's never going to catch up. But uh, valiant effort there. I do still think he could put up numbers good enough to get him to uh, like a second team all ACC kind of thing. I don't think he's so far gone he couldn't come back to second teamer status. Just because he's going to be so dominant and hopefully he racks it up in the tournament.
Did Pitt steal that guy from me? He might have. I felt like his name sounded familiar. He might have been the MVP from uh, last year's Indy Camp. I, I mean, it's been a week. I just don't remember the recruiting at this point. You know, I've had a handful of uh, CBGM recruiting. Uh, like I said, the name sounds kind of familiar, but couldn't say for sure. Looks like I have a heck of a player, though. All right. Now we get the 14 and 6 Syracuse Orange in the friendly confines of Chapel Hill, North Carolina. When we pull out the 17 point victory medley and Ivan Ross. He's saying, Look, I'm on the bench, but don't forget about me. I can still go for 10. And Joyner also popped off for double digit points there. It looked like it was like 18, 19, something like that. So, I mean, Joyner's having himself a year. Now, let's do something else real quick. Let's bounce over. This is my uh, check my check my GPA theory. All right, so lowest SAT on my list was a 960, and SAT minimum was a 960. So once again, uh, hasn't been proven wrong yet. I haven't had a player on my call watch list that didn't qualify in like. 20 25 seasons so uh, it seems like a pretty good rule of thumb you have february 4th eight and three in the acc 16 and four overall number six team in the country <sighs> if we had marshall thomas i'd feel so much better about this but Ivan Ross is doing well, and we do have, we've got enough depth. I, I'm, I don't think I can use that as an excuse as we go on. I think we can still make it happen here. We're still going to push for a Final Four. And hopefully Medley carries us and finishes off the job. On the road at NC State, surely we can win this ballgame. UNC, NC State. Oh, we didn't get it done. Oh, I know what, I know one of the problems. We've brought Jarrett Medley back into the lineup. We haven't backed off of our 70% uh, usage. <laughs> Let's back that back down to 60. I think that'll allow him a little bit more freedom uh, for games like that. Where I mean, it, I mean, he scored a lot of points, but if you give him a little bit more freedom, he could just completely go off and take over a game. But if you try to trap him into some offensive sets he doesn't know, it's going to be problematic. So I definitely, being that that's where all of our offense needs to be running through, I want to make sure that he's got more chances to succeed. So we're going to back off of that. Now we got to go on the road at Florida State. It could be a tough one. 16-6 and six versus 16-5. and five. Come on, baby. Make something happen. Make it happen, Medley. Ah! He tried 11 and 11, and Ivan Ross suffers an injury. So the injury bug is definitely eaten into us this year. Shea Thornton is back in full strength. Ivan Ross pulled his groin. So he's hurting for 17 days. He can survive two weeks. We're getting into the NCAA tournament is all I'm really worried about. If we lose a couple of games because of that injury, so be it. We'll live. I don't want to. We've had so many injuries already this year. I don't. Well, I guess I have to fool around with it. I'd like to win these games on the road. Let's at least just back them behind Rogers and let the AI set a new matrix. Oh, and it completely takes them out. All right. Well, that's fine. All right. So let's see how we can do without Ross, without Thomas, uh, letting. Nick Rogers, the sophomore, be the only rotating man on the inside. We're just so thin with this team right now. And that's the other thing. Uh, our office is set up. Our rotation, our pace, all of this is set up for a fairly deep team. And not only did our depth get crushed with all those transfers, but now doubling down on it with the injuries... Like we're we're running these guys ragged. 
pull, we pulled it out against Virginia Tech. Harris, Rogers, and Tice getting it done. So that's good to see. Uh, but yeah, we just don't have like th- that overwhelming talent advantage like we did last year or like we will next year. Uh, so we just got to survive through this. Unfortunately. Now I can always go in and reset all of those options, but I really don't feel like it. Because I still think we can compete. If we can get healthy, even down Marshall Thomas, I think we compete for a Final Four and have a shot at the ship. I don't think we're the favorite. It looks like Pitt's the favorite. I mean, they came into our place and beat us, so they've got to be the favorite. But we took care of the Ville at home. Jarrett Medley, Nick Rogers, and Shea Thornton, baby. Yeah. All right, looking good there, looking good. The Cavs from Virginia coming in at 12-12. and 12. That's going to be a rough one for them. Look at Pitt sitting over there undefeated. We got to go on the road to Pitt. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they injure easy. Well, it's probably because they're, well, I don't know that they're necessarily stretched thin. The problem is that we've got these just absolute garbage backup guards. Like you have, like last year, you saw LOE coming through doing things as a backup. Like this year, you have not seen any of the backup guards. You've seen Harrison Joyner. But none of the backup guards have appeared as, as anything. Uh, let's go look at the stats for a minute. All right, so Harris with nine a game, Joiner with close to thirteen. Now look, Fingleton is playing minutes. He's getting, I mean, five minutes a game. Bayless with seven minutes a game, three points. So out of all, like outside of our starting guards, add up all the rest. Four, six, less than seven points a game. Pathetic. Compare that to our centers, who are all just like beat up. I mean, the three of them, they're averaging a combined 36, 37 a game. They're killing it. Absolutely killing it. And that's not all on that favor inside thing. Because, I mean, you can see Joyner, he's doing just fine. God, look at the field goal percentages. Medley's the worst of all of them. Probably because I had him shooting too fast in offenses that he doesn't know. Hopefully, as the season goes on, he's just learning more and more of that offense. We'll check on his set knowledge uh, maybe after this sim. Because I would like to know about where he's at. I'm not sure, especially with being out so much with the injury. Like, if you're playing, I think that it helps your development. See, he's still at 30s on both of them. And mid-30s on the zones. Whereas Harris, who was never hurt, he's mid-40s on both of these. And almost 50 on the zones. They're both freshman guys. So, that's the difference. People, uh, and this, right here, somebody clip this part of the, the stream. People always want to ask, like... If you play your players, do they develop differently? Yes. Look at those proficiencies. 44, 41, 54, 49, 54. Started every game. Jarrett Medley. Below 30s. Nothing above 40. That is a huge, huge difference. And that's that's where it's really going to hurt come tourney time because come tourney time... If he, if Medley was up in the 50s the way that Harris is, I could totally bump that, uh, bump the set percentage up to 65, maybe even 70, and let him run with it. But now, like, Medley, our best score, isn't going to have any of that. So, um, but yeah, pl- playing your players, letting them get minutes, letting them get experience, it helps. It absolutely helps. <clears throat> All right, Cavs coming into Chapel Hill, and we're still looking fine. I I still think we're a top four seed. Trying to close out February of 2036 here. A couple more games to finish off the month. First of all, Virginia and North Carolina. Oh, yeah, Brian Joyner taking care of business. Nick Rogers got himself 10 points. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love to see Brian Joyner doing well. You like to see those seniors, uh, you know, leading the way, right? All right, let's check. Is Ivan Ross healthy yet? No, he's still got four days. All right, so we've got to go on the road without him to Notre Dame. They were, ah, he will not be back for the pit game, so we're going to have to go on the road to pit. Oh, but pit lost. Ha, ha, ha. All right, that's all I wanted. I don't want anybody else going undefeated before I can do it. Pit lost. All is well in the world. All right, let's see how this goes. On the road at Notre Dame without Ivan Ross, without Marshall Thomas, and we got smoked. Whoa. That was a beatdown. We've had a lot of really bad games on the road this year. But, I mean, it makes sense. We're, we're super light at guard, super injured on the inside. Uh, I don't know what to do for it. I mean, I could go and change around all the settings and all the everything just to... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> Let me think about it. I might need... Oh! Coming to my house and beat me up. What about I come to your house take you down? Look at that. 72 to 71. Who led the way? I was too excited to even see it. I, like I even have to ask. Medley, 6 of 12 on the inside. 9 of 16 from the line. Look at Eric Tice throwing in his 16 rebounds. Ooh. My word. My word. What a good win. Look, they were up. What a close game. 10 lead changes. 9 times tied. Pitt got up by 11. We got up by 3. And we pulled it out. So, heck of a win there. Very nice. All right. Just because I think that we should... Let's do this. Let's, uh, well, the rotation really doesn't matter. Let's pull this offensive pace down a touch. Actually, a whole lot. We don't have that much depth. Uh, back to the defensive intensity. All right, we're backing everything off just a little bit. Just because we do not have the depth to do it, especially at guard. So we'll run it a little bit slower, uh, maybe get some better shots. And we don't have as much of a talent differential as we had last year. So let's see how this works. Because, I mean, like our the way the strategy was set up, I think against a team like Pitt, it actually hurts us a little bit. I mean, that's a great strategy if you're more talented than the other team, but if you're less talented than the other team, it's not ideal. So, especially with those, I mean, if we got to run guards out there, like the ones that we're running out there, if you're running a high pace, up tempo offense, and you got guards out there that are trying to dribble the ball with their knees, like, what do you think's going to happen? Of course, they're going to be terrible. So that was a change that I really didn't want to make. I wanted to stick with it. But after, like, the transfers last year just really set us back for a year, I guess. But it's all good. Two games to go. We're 20 and 7, 12 and 6 overall. Uh, 12 and 6 in conference, rather. Two games left in the regular season. If we can, if we can avoid any losses finishing out this regular season, we will once again not be a 10 loss team. It's always nice to have less than 10 losses. Georgia Tech at Chapel Hill. Yes, sir. Jarrett Medley doing Eric Tice with a big game. Nick Rogers. So that was all inside play. All inside. And now we finish it off at home against a really bad Boston College team. So let's see what we got here. Coming up on uh, in about two, three days here, we'll get our... Uh, early declarations, which will s most certainly be Jarrett Medley. Uh, ought to be the only one. I don't know if Nick Rogers is a candidate to declare early or not. I'm not certain about that. 
Woo! Boston College, like, random test. There's a reason I made fun of Boston College earlier, man. And that right there, that right there was a reason we were making fun of Boston College earlier. They just got beat down by 45. That was ugly. So, we finished the regular season 22 and 7, 14 and 6 overall. And uh, let's, what do we want to check? We want to check our, who, who goes early. Yep. Should be up. Early declarations. Jarrett Medley, he's the only one good to go there. Let me see, where's the guy from Pitt? Ross Jackson. Yeah, I, the more I see the name, the more I am pretty sure they did steal him from me. Norton final, yeah. I mean, we were never on the Norton after the injury. All right, let's see what happens in this ACC tournament. Let's get it going. This this is when you gotta like you gotta hit your stride. First of all, let's go check out the death chart and make sure that's right. I kind of think is do we still have Ivan Tom? Uh, yeah, we still have Ivan Ross getting nothing, and that's incorrect. That's much better. All right, let's see if we can do something in this ACC tourney. Love to hang another conference banner. Whew. Let's get excited for March, folks. Try to uh, try to see like who's taking down the champs. Like we aren't the team that we were last year, but you still got to come through North Carolina. You still got to come through us. What do you got, ACC? What do you got, Pitt? So if we can take down Pitt here again on a neutral court. I mean, we got them at their place, but they smoked us at ours. So that's sort of like a mystery, right? How do you do that? How do you lose by 20 at home and then win on the road? It's bizarre. Khalid Hightower, that's a good name. All right, the orange. The Syracuse orange. Uh oh, hold on, hold on. I had a yawn sneeze there all at the same time. A pit just beat down NC State. Duke still in it. Let's see if we can get past Syracuse here. Oh, yeah. Jarrett Medley doing his thing. Helped out by the two seniors, Shea Thornton and Brian Joyner. So now it comes back to the Ville. You know? Oh, look at Pitt slipping past Duke. Well, let's see if we can do that to Louisville. It was hard to win at the Yum Center. I don't know if they ever gave us that return game in the Dean Dome. Uh, let's see what happens here on the neutral court. The Tar Heels and the Cardinals. Jarrett Medley, Eric Tice getting big with his 11 and 10. We almost went double, double, doubles with Medley and Tice. One rebound short from Medley. So now the rebound game. We, we went one and one. They beat us at our place. We beat them at theirs. They're pretty clearly the more talented team this year. Uh, but anything can happen, baby. ACC tournament. ACC tournament championship game. Somebody's hanging a banner. Might as well be us. Let's get it. The Tar Heels and the Panthers in the ACC finals. Woo! Oh, they went too quick. I saw Jarrett Medley. I didn't see anything else. Look, look at Jarrett Medley. Oh, my word. And Eric Tice. Actually, it was Eric Tice who was probably... Oh, Jarrett Medley had 10 steals? The center had 10 steals? Are you kidding me? Wow. Shea Thornton did his part with 10 points. You know, pretty much nothing off the bench outside of Ross, which isn't very unexpected. But, uh... I mean, Ross Jackson, you can't say he didn't do his thing. He played every minute. He got 10 rebounds, 10 assists, 4 steals, 32 points. Ross did everything he could, and it wasn't enough to stop Eric Tice, Jarrett Medley, Shea Thornton, and the North Carolina Tar Heels from going back-to-back -back in the ACC tournament. So that's our first back-to-back. -back. Now it's time for the one that matters. But the fact that we beat Pitt at Pitt and in the ACC tournament, like, 
now we're on to something. So let's see. We, we stay injury free. We've got every opportunity in the world to make this happen. Make it go back to back. I think we'll be a two seed. Maybe the worst one. My Bellarmine Knights in there. It hit 13 and 20. <laughs> I'm guessing that was not an at-large bid. Oh, and Kansas in a play-in game. Oof. Rough, rough one for Kansas. Michigan a one. VCU a two. Tennessee, Michigan State. The Dukies, OSU. The Rizzo University down there. The Rizzo University. Missouri with an eight. Tough times in Missouri. Pitt grabs the second one seed. Purdue. Nova, Oregon. Air Force coming out of nowhere. I thought about grabbing Air Force in the CBGM for a minute. Notre Dame with that eight. In New Orleans, there we are, the third number one seed. North Carolina, UConn, IU, Texas Tech, Kansas State. Cincinnati, Dayton, there's a heck of a 7-10 matchup. Cincinnati and Dayton, you don't have to travel far for that one. Of course, you know, it'll be in, like, California. Uh, but regular season, it would be really close. And in Denver, Alabama, Iowa State, UCLA, Cal State, Bakerfield with a 4. What is happening? Oklahoma, BYU. All right. Cal State, Bakerfield with a 4. That's interesting, guys. All right, so... I said from the jump, we had a shot. It count it like it all depends on like the seniors carrying the load and waiting for Medley to step up and have those like nuclear games where he just explodes and he's unstoppable. I got I don't know why stuff's flying around all of a sudden down here. Must be because we're about to be flying high. Like maybe, I, I know what it is. I, I've ascended to the rafters. This is where all the stuff flies around, right? We're in the rafters now. Let's hang the banner. Hang the ship. All right. Make sure you don't go... Uh, don't win the Agalia Award here. You don't want to go down to the 16 seed. Nope. Nothing doing. Oh, there was another injury. I think it was Shea Thornton. No. Who was it? Kevin Harris. Oh, that's brutal. Torn ACL, it looks like. All right, so that's the end of our championship aspirations. Because we don't have any answer for that at all. In 374 days, that's half of next year. Oh, well, that's just wonderful. I feel like that ever since we... Like with Sarath Vaca, he got hurt in the ACC finals as well. So we've been at North Carolina three or four years now, and injuries have just devastated us. Like this could have been our chance at a third championship, and instead, like we're sitting at one with, and we're dead in the water. There's no way around it. We're dead in the water. You just can't deal with that. We have nothing. These people are awful. Awful. Six and four. Six and four. All right. we'll, we can give it a go and see how far we can last here, but I really don't foresee winning a championship with this crap at point guard. So uh, I would say like, we might still be able to win a second round game. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Kevin Harris just got hurt, Beach Bear, so our point guard is Gonzo. So now we're starting to walk on shooting guard at the point. And we got to play Wisconsin again, who is a preseason, a pretty good team uh, on a neutral court. This is definitely like, this is going to be a talented Wisconsin team. We've got a garbage point guard. This is a recipe for a second round upset. This is how one seeds go home early. I mean, I, I swear I don't, 
<laughs> I swear I'm not doing the commentary after the fact. This is very much live. But like that's how one seeds go home early. You lose your point guard. You don't have anything to replace it. You go home early. Especially against an under Wisconsin team. So, I mean, that's all she wrote. There's nothing to do here. There's nothing to... Nothing we could have done different. We just got destroyed. I... Uh, You know, we to 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 analyze this, to talk about what we could have done different, you gotta go back to the last stream. And what we could have done differently in the last stream was either kick off uh either kick off LOE or wall, right? And I chose not to do that because I thought with both of them on the team we had a better shot at a championship, and if we lose them both, so be it. Had I known that that toxic relationship was also gonna put Ashley Dieter in the transfer portal I may have let LOE go. I don't know. I may have done things differently in that case. But I had no idea that that, that was affecting Dieter or the other guy, whoever that was. Uh, so so we just let it go and figured, you know what, if we lose them both, we win this championship. Uh, but then Dieter also transfers out. Then we come into this season severely underhanded. And then to eat that, to eat that injury, like the, there's just no way around it. That is what it is, and that happens in college basketball. So, I mean, you really can't even be upset about it. Shit, I just missed. We're already into the Final Four, and I forgot to do the review because I'm so angry. <laughs> We're to the championship game. Uh, let's go back and at least see what happened. All right, so in Raleigh, Michigan VCU, that's all chalk in Detroit. Pitt Villanova. Kent State got out there. Here, Wisconsin beat us. They got at Wisconsin, actually went to the Final Four. So, like I said, you know, they were highly ranked early season. Uh, and then Bama. And then Bama knocked off Wisconsin, and Michigan beat Pitt. So, the Big Ten, a little Big Ten redemption here. Yeah, a little Big Ten redemption. The Michigan Wolverines take home the ship. So, we couldn't go back to back. We got eaten alive by injuries. Couldn't make it happen. Got a great team coming in for next year, but let's get through this offseason stuff and see what we actually look like for next year. All right, so Ross Jackson won the Norton, the player of the year, freshman, freshman of the year, everything. It's your first team All-Americans, your second team All-Americans. Go and check out the ACC here. Second teamers, nothing. First teamers. We got not, we got hosed having Medley get hurt. And then something tells me Ross Jackson was good. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Pit, 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 pit. Wonder why he was coach of the year. It's a mystery. So. What a, what a downer, you know? I mean, I'm sure a lot of teams go through it. But it's just a real downer. Check out this job hiring. See who wants us. Everybody. No, not really. Arizona's down to four star. Down to 73 prestige. Cincinnati on probation. All right. Yeah, I think Jackson was the number one player. I think you're right. But could you imagine if we'd had Jackson and Medley? And if they had both been injury-free, how crazy that would have been. All right, season review. Oh, we dropped huge. 92 to 85 on school prestige. All right, so losing in the second round, not good if you want to be a 90, uh, in the 90s for your school prestige. So do we need replacements on the staff? Yes, sir, we do. Let's go grab us a recruiter and a practice coach. Austin Hansen, the one that we tried to go for in the CBGM. Uh, let's go ahead and land him here. And ooh, let's see if we can grab Luke Murray, one of the assistants from the Ville. I mean, we should easily be able to offer him like 
Mm, let's offer him 90. So that'd be 240, 265. That still gives us more than enough. Make that offer. Run a bid round, see what we get. <laughs> Fairfield is on probation. <laughs> Yikes. We didn't get either of them? Luke Murray went number one with Houston. Okay, that makes sense. Aust oh, yeah, yeah, we got Austin Hansen. All right. Nice work. Oh, yeah, let's grab this guy. Wait. Second assistant making 31. Oh, wait. See if that works. Yeah, it's real nice to have the budget, right? Offer some coaches. Yeah, we got Keith Ergo. So he's really good at player development. He's also pretty good at defense. So we just hired a 99-rated recruiter, 78 uh, player developer with 55 defense. His offense was lacking, but that's pretty solid. All right, so our staff definitely took a step in the right direction. That still gives us, she's $235,000 to recruit with. I mean, it's so much more than we actually need. All right, meet with the board. We'll go for the facilities because obviously we don't care for the budget. Nope. Denied. What's in this season? <laughs> Shamwell says Kentucky paid a recruit, so they had to put Cleveland State on probation. Uh, that's about how it works, man. That is how it works. Unless you're Louisville. I mean, Louisville's getting beat down right now. You know, we had the, the stripper thing. Then we had Adidas try to pay the kid. And now we got uh, Dino Gaudio was trying to blackmail the university. I don't know if y'all saw that. But the assistant coach we just fired uh, was trying to blackmail us for like 17 months salary or some nonsense. And he was going to re release a video of they did videos for recruits or let pra uh, graduate assistants assist with practice or something stupid. Some kind of level two violation that the university had already reported. He was trying to blackmail him for it. So <laughs> good luck with that, my man. It's an FBI investigation now. Oh, so I really just, the main thing I want to see is these transfers. Make sure we avoided that ridiculous transfer bug again. And then the the bad thing is, you know, we brought in a point guard with the idea of letting him play behind Harris. And now Harris is going to miss this entire year. So it does become kind of frustrating. But I do think we brought in enough shooting guards uh, that we can survive it. Number one recruiting class, not a surprise there. All right, two thirty-five. We want at least like sixty, seventy thousand, so we can spend about one fifty. Right, let's just go like National Report, America East Report. That's one hundred ten thousand. You know, we can throw in one. More. Do we want to throw in one more? Well, let's throw in a. Premium Southeast, I don't know. Just spend some money. Maybe we can get a budget upgrade. No transfers. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we've actually got three scholarships available for transfers. So I like to not look at my uh, roster beforehand. But now I kind of have to. All right, so Calhoun is obviously our point guard. Daryl Morris coming in hot. So is Daryl Wiley. So is Chris Knox. So is Justin Claggett. Kyle Dodd's solid. So, I mean, pretty much a lot of what we expected there. Let's take a look at this actual... Let's take a look at the actual ratings. 
Look at Chris Knox with the nine in scoring. Willie and Claggett both with eights. Kyle Dada seven. Oh, oh my word. So poor Ray Calhoun, who was supposed to be a backup, is going to be forced into some starter duty. God, Chris Knox. I mean, solid inside and outside. Ex uh, exceptional score. The passing is incredible. The rebounding is incredible. The defense, the steals. This dude, how is he not in? How is he not the Indy MVP? Bucket getter, playmaker. He's a playmaker at small forward. Defender, cleanup. The dude's like Scottie Pippen over here. He can defend. He can run the point. Goodness gracious, what a player Chris Knox is. Okay. So, transfer-wise... So, you got to think, well, redshirt Harris. So, we'll have two sophomores next year. Uh, okay. Okay. Maybe there... Uh, really, the only kind of transfer I might bring in would maybe be a center. Maybe a center. Well, there's no real interest, so I'm just not going to worry about it. Only got four scholarships available. Let's just skip this. It'll change our ratings around a, a hair. So we'll take a look after these sessions are over. Chris might know go down as one of the best Tar Heels yeah, Chris Knox. Uh, Chris Knox is what you meant. Well, the thing is, he's got to compete with Sarath Vaca first. I mean, if he stays healthy, sure. Sarath Vaca was a beast. He would have been one of the best Tar Heels ever had he not gotten hurt. But, I mean, we've definitely seen how the injury bug can completely derail a season. I think everybody agrees. We understand that at this point. So, oh, my word. What kind of excitement was that? We had a national championship, like an outside shot at a national championship because of depth. And now, like, the depth issues, especially at guard, bleed into this year a little bit. The good thing is we got Morris, uh, Wiley, and Calhoun, three exceptional guards. And this year, if you have to, you can definitely, like, well, I don't know. You don't have nearly the depth on the inside this year. Not nearly. You lose Tice. You lose, um, we lost three guys on the inside and only brought back one. Okay. But the two exceptional small forwards really give you a lot of uh, flexibility. Uh, having these guards. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think we're going to bump back up over here. <laughs> Let's hit summer travel real quick. Do I limit Knox's minutes a little? No, not at all. No. I'll play him. 34, 36 minutes a game. Whatever whatever the AI suggests on the Matrix. So, I mean, we got Claggett as the backup. All right. we, we've got a more evenly balanced team this year. This right here, this entry to Kevin Harris, is the only reason that I don't think we're the favorite to win it this year. Out 274 days, we basically have to redshirt him. So let's go ahead and do that right now. God, Marshall Thomas. All right, I didn't even notice that. He's still out another 45 days, but he'll be all right by the time the season starts. Man, those knee injuries are not messing around. No, 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 no. What we'll do... I mean, we'll... The thing is, he's so much better than Cleggett. 
Okay, so inside scoring is about the same. Knox is two points better at the jumper, better at free throw, better at scoring, much better at passing, significantly better rebounder, better defender, better at blocks, better at steals. He's just better across the board, so you're not splitting time here. What we'll do with Cleggett, 6 7, we'll, what we'll do with Cleggett is we'll go over into the depth chart and we'll grab him and we'll say you're also going to play it shooting guard and power forward and, and set something up like that so that we're going to get Clegg at significant time but we're still playing Knox the majority of the time now obviously I'll rework this some I mean we, we don't want Daryl Morris to be sitting over here not playing at all we want to make sure that we open him up at point guard Manny Barnes at center and power forward yep that's right so you can do it again so this is much more and Corey Bayless is a walk on yeah, this right here is the kind of lineup that we're going to go with here. Very heavy minutes on these starters, significant minutes on these three, but there's a ton of talent in these eight players. So we can go ahead over here. We can back right up to where we were before, picking up that offensive pace, maybe not all the way up, uh, picking that defensive intensity up a little bit, picking that full court defense up a little bit. We're not quite there, but we're about here. We can save that. So, I mean, we got a pretty good depth chart right there. That's a great eight-man roster. If we can pull that eight-man roster off throughout this entire year, we are setting very pretty. Yeah, I mean, it, you can't play you can't play sports worried about injury. I mean, if you've already won the game, yes, you pull your players. But if you haven't won the game yet, you play your players. You, you play to win. So, um, I think we're set up here. You know, with, with what we've got, we're obviously deeper than last year. Knox is, you know, I liked the way that Jarrett Medley's uh, ability sort of stacked, like the inside scoring, the scoring, the bucket getter, all that sort of stuff. It it lent itself very well. Oh, one other thing that I do want to do is change this back to more of a balanced setup. So we can save that. But I think that right there is where we're going to cut it off, guys. Uh, you know, we, we're set up. We're still a little bit, like, if we had Harris at point guard, I would feel so good about next year. Uh, without him, we're going to compete, uh, but we're still we're still fragile. We're still trying to recover from that mass exodus that we had last year. So, guys, I hope you had half as much fun as I did with this. You know, we didn't make it in the NCAA tournament, but we hung another ACC banner. We're moving in the right direction. We're building a program. We're bringing in non-stop recruits. We're ranked highly. Like, this is North Carolina Tar Heel basketball. We're doing it big time right here on the GM Game stream, and I'm having fun doing it. So thank you all so much for showing up. I had fun. Hope you did as well, and I'll definitely see you all the next time.